Welcome to the Watchdog Report. My name is Ed Safone. I'm President of the United Taxpayers and the Yorktown Watchdog. We got a crazy show for you today. Now, let me ask you one question. Why did the chicken cross the road? We're going to find out. You can't count your chickens before they hatch. We'll find out about that. And let me introduce Rob Robinson. Nice to meet you, Rob. Thank you. Thank you okay, your, this is your show, showing about the ultimate breather. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, let me get Oh. <coughs> I'll introduce our mascot <coughs> of the company, Chicken Little. Check this out, folks. That's the old chicken dance, yeah, hey. Let's just stay right in the middle. That's so exciting, isn't it, to it's watch him dance? exciting. Days? Yeah, he draws a crowd <laughs> wherever he goes. Hey, it's great. Okay, good. So that's Chicken Little. All right, Rob. Chicken okay. Little. Nice, nice yeah, going. Thank you. Good job. That was nice. All right, so tell us about this brooder. Okay. Ultimate brooder. Um, I have over 30 years of experience raising game birds and, and poultry. And I designed this brooder, and I found a, man, I found a manufacturer to manufacture it for me to put it on the market. And he's a world-renowned cabinet maker and craftsman. Uh, his name is Mike Abate, who does a wonderful job. And in production, it's in, in Mayapec, and I can ship. You can pick them up, and they can be delivered. That's great. Yeah, and um, it can, the design is great. You can use it in the home. You could use it in a garage and an enclosed patio. Um, even if you don't have an interest in poultry, just the design, having it in the house is a great conversation piece. It's a really nice piece of furniture as well. And it's made of <coughs> solid pine with a quarter inch mesh for ventilation. And it runs on two heat lamps, 60 watts each. And it has a built-in thermometer so you can regulate and know the temperature. Typically in a, in a house, it's about 70 degrees. It stays about 98 degrees. Wow. And the large hinge door gives access for cleaning, loading it, unloading it. And as you can see, there's little chicks in here now. These are actually Cornish game hens. How many and can you fit in there? The brooder will hold 50 chicks up to wow. two weeks of age. Wow and it'll hold, 50, it'll hold 25 up to five weeks of age. And it's great for quail, partridge, pheasant, standard chickens, bantams, peafowl, guinea hens, ducks. It's very good. Wow. It's versatile. So, so what happens after they meet their weeks done? What happens to the little creatures? Well, after six weeks, the, the Cornish game hens can actually go to market. Oh, okay. <coughs> yeah. And when they're fully feathered, they can be put out to pasture, free range, or you could put them in a chicken coop. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, so depending on what your needs are, what you're raising the, the poultry for, is, will dictate what you're going to do with them. Because I always got to ask this question, because I don't know. How does a chicken without a rooster lay eggs? Does a chicken without a rooster lay eggs? I mean, yeah. Oh, it does? Yeah, okay. the, the chicken will always lay an egg, but if you want to have fertilized eggs, then you'll need the rooster. Okay. 
because we have new laws in Yorktown and Peekskill. Mm -hmm. They just passed and we have five, I think, hens with no roosters. No roosters, so, correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> All right, that's great. So yeah, so uh, backyard poultry is becoming really popular and this brooder is an essential asset to your collection of what you need to raise poultry with. Yeah, but it is, it's, it weighs about 35 pounds okay. and it comes complete with two waters, a feeder, a five pound bag of chick starter, a bag of shavings, and 25 chicks for $350. Or if you just want to buy the brooder by itself, it's $300. And if you want to buy the brooder with the supplies, which is the two waters, the feeder, the bag of shavings, and the bag of chick starter, it's $325. And depending on where you want to have it shipped to, it's about $150 to ship it. And you're good to go. Well, this looks like it'll fit in a trunk. It will. The this dimensions are 48 inches long, okay. 24 inches wide, and a one foot tall. Okay. And it's very easy to m maneuver. Mm -hmm. It can carry just like a suitcase. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's very, very efficient. Yeah, the benefits of the solid wood construction, it maintains the temperature perfectly. It d there's no fluctuation where the chicks are going to become stressed and huddle in one area. It, it's perfect. It's great. And the, with the ventilation, it keeps, with the three sides ventilated, it keeps the water nice and fresh, the bottom dry, and it keeps the chicks growing beautifully. Okay. And uh, is that how you clean it out and you get the chicks in, this here? Yeah. The best thing to do oh. is use a shop vac. Shop vac. Without sucking <coughs> up the chicks to just <laughs> take the shop vac and, and clean it right out. It works really well. And the first two weeks, you want to keep the, the food scattered around the floor with just a light dusting of shavings. That way the chicks will be constantly eating, so no matter where they are, they're going to be pecking and you'll see that their growth weight rate is perfect. And they put on they grow really quickly and they feather out nicely and you'll find that not very many of them will will die from suffocation from being huddled in one area. Well, oh, that's you have to worry about. Yeah. yeah. How many say the total the maximum amount of chicks can go in there? 50 chicks. Wow. Mm -hmm. Standard a, chicks. It's like running in the subway, you know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it works really, really well. Okay. Yeah, it's great. And I do have a website, it's theultimatebrooder.com, uh, and you can view the, the, the product and you'll see some photos of the chicks on there as well. And there's actually a, a video too of basically putting the brooder together, which may interest the viewers. Let me see, I have... Um, So where did you get the chicks from? The chicks actually came from a hatchery in, in Ohio called Ideal Hatchery. Oh, okay. They, they ship them right in the mail and you pick them up at the post office. You pick them up at the post office live? Oh, yeah. You pick them right up live. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. I, picked, I actually picked them up this morning. Oh, wow. That's pretty interesting. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, at, hatch, at, at um, Ideal Hatchery, they hatch every Wednesday. Oh. And, it, and it, they ship overnight. So you get them Thursday morning. So that, will you get your supply from? My supplier, yeah. Oh, my supplier. That's yeah, they're nice. great to work with. Oh, that's they're, good. Yeah, that's where they all come from. So, so how long does it take to a, a chick to get to be a, a sizable chicken? If this is five weeks the latest, I think you said, right? It, for the Cornish game hens, it takes about six weeks for them to be able to be marketed to mm -hmm. um, oh. butcher. Well, I see some chickens that are really... Big, you know? Yeah, most in a, most chickens mature at six months. Oh, six months. Okay. Yeah, and if you're raising chickens for to for eggs, it takes about five to six months for the hens to start laying eggs. Okay, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, <coughs> I was just trying to think how to <coughs> work down <coughs> to buy eggs. Sometimes I'm allergic to some of these things, you know, but <laughs> I don't think it's that. It's the studio that has mm -hmm. a lot of dust in it. But anyway, so what else you got? Now, camera three is over here, 
And if you want to tell them any more uh, about it, let's okay. see what else I. The brooder is great if if you're looking for a hobby, a new hobby, oh, or hobby, trying okay. to get somebody interested in a hobby. Uh, raising poultry is a fascinating, interesting hobby. Or if you need to replace an old, worn-out brooder, this would be. The, this is actually the finest brooder on the market today, hands down. If you look on the web and you and you look up brooders, you're not going to find a brooder as nice as this or as efficient, hands down. Period. Did you say it? it you get free chicks for a certain amount of money? You do. for um, Mostly if you come to my house and buy a brooder, I'm going to okay. give you 25 chicks. Oh, okay, that's mm -hmm. good. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Yeah, no matter wh whether you buy it with the chicks, the $350 price or the, the $325 or the $300, you're going to get chicks no matter what if you come to my house or um, if you buy one directly from me. So let me just get this straight. Every, f say, five weeks, let's use the, uh, that time mm -hmm. line. You take them out. And you give them someplace. Now, who do they give them to after five weeks? The slaughterhouse. Put them in the backyard. Oh, okay. Depending and on what you're doing with them, why you're raising them is going to depend on well, where they're going well, to go. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Okay. Yeah. So if you had a backyard, that would be the next step from the chicks to the backyard. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you would store for at least 25. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to raise chickens for show, show birds, bantams, fancy bantams, um, then you're oh. going to keep them for pets. Okay, so you would have to find out what kind of chickens you're ordering, all right? Right. Now, what, what kind mm -hmm. of chicks are these? These are Cornish game hens. These oh, are actually game. meat birds. Oh, meat, okay. Yeah, so if you came to me and you said, Rob, I want to order a brooder, but I'm not sure what kind of chicks I want to raise, right. then I'm going to ask you, what, what would you like to do? Are you looking for meat birds? Are you looking for eggs? Are you looking for show birds? Right. And then that'll depend on what type of bird that <coughs> you'll yeah. be raising. Wow, because mm -hmm. uh, when I was a kid in my family, we always raised pigeons. We had over 450 of them. Mm. So sometimes you see them on our table and then you say, whoa, you know? Yeah. We will play with them a f few minutes ago. And I, so <coughs> we were in uh, Costa Rica and the hens are out there and she just went out, picked one up. I don't know. Scared of people, you know, executed it. <laughs> it's a nice way to put it. Yeah, plucked it, and then we ate it. It was re really different. And, and then we realized that was the one that was running around before. So I, I'm just saying that's, that's pretty cool. And uh, <clears throat> I, I think they're allowed to have four hens in these new laws. So I don't know if it's per acre or per what. So but then, uh, well, that's good. So... Uh, I'm just asking you questions about chickens. Go How ahead. come a chicken lays a brown egg sometime and sometimes they lay white eggs? Well, there's several varieties of chickens. There's okay. varieties that lay brown eggs and there's varieties that lay white eggs. <laughs> oh, really? okay. So if you prefer white eggs, then you're going to go with a heavy breed like a Rhode Island Red or a Barred Rock oh. that's going to lay a, a brown egg. Where if you prefer white eggs, then you'll go with a a, a white leghorn or a brown leghorn, a lighter breed that is bred for white eggs. Okay. Are they the same when you eat them? Do they well, taste the same? I mean, brown eggs a are a little bit richer oh, okay. than white eggs. Okay. Yeah, so depending on, on <coughs> whether you're going to bake a cake or if you're going to have eggs over easy. All right. Now, <coughs> I don't know. I, I remember Sylvester Stallone in the movie Rocky, you know, he cracked like six eggs. I don't know if I could do that, but that's, that was cool. I'm just trying to think of some stuff with the <coughs> about chickens and eggs, you know. But uh, what, what, else you, what else you got? Let's see. Uh, well, I can tell you that yeah. a, lot of, a lot of hunters and people who have um, property who would like to raise uh, pheasants or bobwhite quail, this brooder is perfect if you want to restock an area if you're a, a wildlife lover and want to add pheasants or, or some other game birds to your property you can order the chicks right from the website so if you have a, have a problem just get in touch with me and i can obtain basically whatever you'd like and um, raise your poultry and game birds and release them yeah how do you tell can you tell what's a male and what's a female? You know, I can, but I, I try and, I, I, <coughs> when people ask me to, I can, but I don't want to, if somebody wants 
an egg laying hen, okay. and it turns out to be a rooster. I don't want to have the responsibility <laughs> oh, okay. of somebody telling me, oh, you, you sexed it wrong. Oh, you sexed it so, wrong. So, yeah, I can, but I don't. Okay, so that, that that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, because uh, it, it sounds like a great hobby, mm -hmm. and but it, every five weeks you would have to replace them and do what you have to do. Yeah. So I, I guess you, if you can find a plan from getting them in, uh, making them grow up for five weeks and then getting them out, and maybe getting a new brand of chick and do the same thing. So I thought that was really good. Mm -hmm. When you said hobby, it was really, really good. Yeah. And then if, if they go in the yard, you would have to probably get a bigger pen, huh? For sure. <laughs> Keep going, that's it. Have, have you ever uh, put showbirds, because we go to, uh, the fairs and you see all these different chickens with all different colors and all different feathers and stuff like that. Do you uh, do that yourself? When I was younger, I used to raise exotic birds oh, exactly. and show birds, show poultry to take to the fairs and exhibit them. Oh. Sure. Oh, okay. Cause yeah, I, it's a fascinating hobby and it's becoming more and more popular. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Well, with the economy today, is it's getting popular because eventually... You know, if you go buy a pound of chicken breast, is four dollars and sixty-five cents, and you have the whole chicken when it grows up. You do, <laughs> yeah, and it's very efficient to raise them. It's not that expensive at all. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a it's a very nice thing to do, you know, especially if you have the property. So besides the the feed that you give them, do, do they? Eat anything out? Do they eat bugs? They eat grass? They eat something else? They're great for bug control. Ticks in the ground, put them in the garden, they'll eliminate all the bugs. Oh. Yeah, they're, they're great. And if you raise guinea hens, they're, they're really well known for tick control and, and great watchdogs. Yeah, yeah well, I'm terrific. Italian, so it's a guinea hen, huh? A guinea hen. Does that, uh, I don't know, I don't know how Italian. it got its name, but it's just. <laughs> <laughs> I worked at the court, we had a guinea hen for about a year and a half, would peck on the door and this one lawyer would feed it all the time. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> it disappeared. So I don't know if the, if the animals, oh, maybe that's a, does the animals cause a problem for this? Like cats and rats and different things? Because that, that's probably what people ask, right? Yeah, this is really, it's solid. Oh. And it's, you know, you really, predators really can't get yeah. into it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but if, you know, if you have a problem with, um, Predators, foxes, raccoons, you're going to need something really sturdy outside when you put the, when they go from the brooder outside, Sound. you're going to need something really solid like a chain link fence with, with uh, an underlying um, concrete oh. to really make it sturdy because raccoons, bears, foxes, they're pretty, pretty rugged animals. They can break down barriers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's cool. Yeah, you got to be really careful. So how, how many do you have in there now? Right now I brought five with me. Okay. Yeah, just to uh, put them in. So actually, you know, they're pretty cute. They really are. And they grow really quickly. Yeah. yeah. Can you can tell when a chick is happy because they're not noisy. Oh, they're not and noisy. And the temperature is comfortable, so they're not, they're not huddled in one area pecking and chirping. They're pretty comfortable. Okay. Yeah, you don't want to use more than a 60 watt heat lamp. It's gonna, then it'll get too hot. There's a heat barrier that I had in the design that you can see that keeps the heat towards the back. So when they do want to cool off, they can come yeah, to, to the, the front, front. Oh, okay, and get yeah. some cooler air and eat and, and drink. So those are 260s? They're 260 watt oh, okay. bulbs, correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, <clears throat> Do you shut them off at night? No, they stay on 24 hours a day. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep, 24 hours a day they stay on. It makes, if you have it in the house, it makes a great night light. Oh, night light. Yeah, yeah exactly. watching the chicks is better than watching television. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah, I have one in the living room now that has uh, chicks in it, and it's more fascinating to watch the chicks than it is to watch the television. Television, that's it. Yeah. Well, yeah, we, it's great. We see Channel 4 with the... <coughs> the image of the <laughs> the fan, what, uh, the peacock. Okay. That's the only thing. Probably the peacock. 
<laughs> but anyway. Sure. But I really, I encourage people to get to start a poultry hobby and start off with a couple of chicks. You don't have to start off with 25. Just start out with five or how many you'd, you'd right. like. Start out, you know, get a mixture. Get a couple of, um, you know, different varieties of, of chicks. You don't want to mix age groups. You want to try to keep uh, day-old chicks together. Oh, I see. Yeah. If you put older chicks with the younger chicks, there's bullying and pecking, and it, it turns out to be a disaster. Oh. Yeah, so you want to keep age groups together. And uh, same type of chicken. Yeah, and the same size. You don't size. want to put smaller chicks with bigger chicks Chick either. Well, that's why we have a problem at the schools like that. You know, yeah, bullying. bullying. And stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, <clears throat> do they all come healthy? It looks like they, they do. Are. You know. Ideal Hatch, I'm not plugging Ideal Hatcher, it just happens to be okay. the supplier that I've used forever. The chicks come and they're so healthy. Okay. Yeah, and over the years, especially the last couple of months, I've been ordering, I've gotten hundreds of chicks from them, thousands actually, and maybe two of them I've lost. Oh. Yeah, so the survival nice. rate is great. Oh, well, that's good. There, there should be a mechanism, though, after the five weeks that you could tell people where they should take the chicks. Because I think that that would probably be a big problem for everybody. Well, now that they're old enough, what do I do with them? I don't have a yard, and I have to get rid of them. So the, the most humane thing that they could do is what? Craigslist. Craigslist, okay, there you go. <coughs> Come on, buy a chick. Yes, Five Craigslist, weeks yeah. Maybe, you know, if you want to give them away, put an ad on Craigslist. Oh, okay. All right, that's not. That's yeah. Right. Or if you know a farm that is looking for a rooster for a watch, for an alarm clock, oh, a rooster! Get on the clock. phone. <laughs> yeah, that's, well, that's why I didn't put the roosters in the uh, in the law. Yeah. Yeah, you can't have the rooster. Yeah. But <coughs> if you see in your hand, I <coughs> I love marketing, <coughs> and I made up cards uh, that I give out that has a picture of the brooder and the website and my contact information, and on the back. Um, you know, gives the chick information. I also have, uh, I sell uh, pickled eggs, pickled quail eggs and, and regular pickled eggs. So on my new cards that I have, you'll see the ones with the pickled eggs. Pickled eggs on, huh? Yeah. That's pretty wild. So. But yeah, if you if you raise chickens just up to the point where it's time to uh, get rid of them, just make up a card and, you know, let people know that you have chickens either you want to give them away or you want to sell them or trade. Um, you know, use your imagination. Right, so it's it's basically the the cost of the brooder first, and the chicks to start with. The light bulbs are inexpensive, mm -hmm. and uh, what else can you think about? Now this, this is the way to get clean it, right? Yes. In and out. Yep. It has the large hinge door for easy access, cleaning, loading it, unloading it, and one question that people ask me is how do I catch how do I catch the chicks because when I go to reach in they all scatter oh, yeah, so I right. tell them take a one foot by four inch piece of cardboard or a, or a thin piece of wood and corral them and it's so much easier just to pick them up and put them in the crate that you're going to be shipping them or transporting them in let me see you get one you want me to catch one for you See what you can do. Without These the little guys are actually pretty friendly. Oh, you got vicious ones too? They can. There's some that are vicious, but you know, <laughs> I find that um, the heavier breeds are a little friendlier. Show it to the camera. Show it to the camera because that's. There's the the day old chick. Okay. That's it. Now that's there it. I can see. Wow. There's the little guy. They are really friendly. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, you'll find the heavier breeds to be really friendly. They're oh. handleable. Yeah. And how, how much, now these are a day old. A day old. So how big do they get when they're five weeks? In five weeks, these will reach up to five to six pounds if you feed them really? the broiler ratio of the, the high protein food, sure. Yeah, they're, these are a fast-growing meat bird. Oh, okay, five yeah, or six So pounds. if you're looking for Cornish game hens for Christmas, start them about five weeks before Christmas, and you'll have wow. nice Cornish game hens for the table. 
Yeah, I remember my dad used to do it. I could never do it, but <clears throat> the, uh, the two finger method, and that goes in there, and, and then we have it for supper. Wow. So that was pretty wild. We had over 450 birds and all different kinds of pigeons. Some were for show, mm -hmm. uh, homers, they were for racing, and it was, it was a really a great hobby. The only thing that complained was the neighbors, right. the droppings, you know. So all the droppings are in one spot here, so you don't have to worry about it. But it's great for the garden. Yeah, great for the garden. Great yeah. for the garden. Great for the garden, yeah, okay, yeah. great. I used to raise the Indian fantail pigeons. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And on my label, the quail eggs, is a picture of me and uh, a white Indian fantail. Oh, great, yeah, yeah those are beautiful yeah. birds. Pigeons are great. Yeah. And then we, we had them trained pretty well. <coughs> we, we took pictures of them all over. Because you know, once they come for the food, and they will land on your shoulder and all that stuff. So, uh, as a hobby, you can't train these things, but it'd be it'd be cool. But um, all right. So, uh, you have anything else in your little thing? Let's re repeat um, it up again. Let's, let's let's see what else you got. What did you miss? Yeah. So, if you want to contact me, okay. uh, theultimatebrooder.com. All right. So we we need camera three. To uh, come on, Dennis, camera three, pal. Thank you. All <laughs> right, go ahead. So if you'd like to Look contact ahead. me, uh, you can go to my website at theultimatebrooder.com. You can give me a call at 914-417-8052, and I'll be happy to help you. And I do ship. You can pick up, and I also do deliver, and I can help you set, set up your, okay. your brooder and chicks for you. Um, with the chicks, just give me, it takes five days, so in five days you'll have the chicks. And I have the, the brooders in stock now okay, that I can pick where, up. Where's your, where's your office located? My office is located on North James Street in Peekskill. James Street in Peekskill, yep, okay. I'm local, and I'll deliver all over Westchester. Um, I can do Putnam and Duchess as well. All right, so it's time for him because we only have two minutes to go. Okay, let's bring on Chicken Little. Chicken Must Little was ready here. Because he's, he's warm in that outfit. Yes, Chicken Little. Uh-oh. I oh. think we may have to cancel Chicken Little. Jose, come on, Jose. Come over this way. Can see if you can get that going. Let him get it going. Yeah, Chicken Little goes to farmer's right, markets here. with me. All right, press the button and we... We End go. the show with a little music. All right. Let's do the chicken dance. That's it. Move over to your left just a little. To your right again, I guess. Left, left, the other left. Yeah, there you go. There you go. All right. That looks great. Yeah, so if you have any questions, give me a call, 914-417-8052. Or you can email me at theultimatebrooder at hotmail.com and I'll be happy to help you. hobby you got all the instructions how to do it you got his telephone number you know where his office is in Peekskill go out and have some fun thanks for watching